How's it going guys? This is Apple Fox here, back again with another video, and we all want to save time, do stuff faster than we normally do. It's not always possible, but we can do several very handy tricks with our iPads that will definitely save you some precious time. And here in this video, I will be showing you some of them. These gestures are all very easy to perform, so without any further hesitation, let's get started. So it works on any iPad, it doesn't matter if you have the latest iPad Pro in the pocket, well probably you won't fit a tablet in your pocket, but you get my point. All iPads running iOS 10 should be fine for this, but of course, the newer models might react faster to the gesture. Now the first one is a way to get to the home screen from any running application. It basically replaces the actual home button. You can also use it in case your home button broke down or something, even if assistive touch is dedicated for this, but anyways, inside any app you need to use all of your five fingers and perform this. You just sort of grab the application and it gets you to the home screen. I don't expect you to use it all the time. When it's more comfortable to click the home button, it doesn't make sense to use a gesture just because you know how to do it. We're talking about saving time, not wasting it. It's of course great to have another option up in your sleeve, just in case you'll need it. The next one is from Safari interface. It's used to switch between tabs and it's extremely easy. You of course have an option to go to the old tab view, but who wants to save so much time? Instead, take two of your fingers and try to do this. At first, pinch them together and then swipe immediately after. This makes you to jump over to another open tab. It's really handy once you get used to it. This gesture can be performed on an iPhone as well, so you don't need to have an iPad to try this out. But the catch is that you need to be in landscape mode in order for this to work. So rotate your device and do the very same thing. And as you can see, you can easily switch between the tabs just like you did on the iPad. It's probably less comfortable to use it on a smaller screen, but it's possible too. Now, this is something not many people are familiar with, and it's again in the Safari. Because most of us know that some iPads have built-in multitasking feature for certain apps, but there is also a multitasking panel for Safari tabs. Just grab the tab you can see at the top of the screen and simply drag it to the left. There is immediately another new tab. We all have to use keyboard to type stuff in. No worry, I'm not gonna show you a different way to type, but a slightly hidden feature instead. I said slightly hidden because some people know about it, but there are still some people who have no idea that something like this even exists. So if you swipe your fingers away from each other on the keyboard, it splits into two parts. If you do that at the opposite direction, it comes back to normal. It works in landscape mode too, and the reason it is there is simple. It's a lot more comfortable to use it this way, and you don't have to stretch your fingers that much to tap the one key you want. Since I discovered this really neat trick, I use it all the time to be honest. The next one has been part of the iPad for a very long time, from the first iPad I believe, and a lot of people still haven't heard of this. Basically, take your four fingers and simply swipe up. Did you notice what happened? The multitasking panel showed up, it's that easy. By the way, in the upcoming iOS 11, it will probably get removed because only a swipe up with one finger will trigger the multitasking panel plus control center. Also, four fingers need to be involved in this one, but now swipe horizontally instead. You need to be inside any application in order to make it work. And the actual swipe allows you to switch quickly between open applications. It's possible to swipe either direction, so it's very easy. Maybe you're not used to it yet, but it can come in handy at times, so I'm pretty sure sometimes you'll take use of this. And that is the end guys, the iPad tricks you need to start using right now. Let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section if you want to. Thank you for watching, I got a lot of videos prepared for you so don't hesitate with subscribing to the Apple Fox channel. Have a nice day and see you in the next one.